Hi there again. Uh, so uh, here we are on part two of the page three speed paint. And uh, hopefully I'll be able to talk a little bit more about the actual comic itself. Um, one thing I wanted to mention, though, before I get started is that um, in the previous video, I sounded a little disparaging of my 19 followers. And let me just say that uh, before I started working on these speed paints, I kind of went through my old videos and kind of just was looking at previous comments that people had left. And I have to say, I really, I mean, it really is something that you guys did follow this channel, have stuck with it for so long, despite how much, you know, how limited the content is in terms of, you know, how many videos there are and how long it was in between them. I mean, even, you know, just the first couple videos, there was still like a five year gap. But I just remember the other day I saw a comment, I miss you. And that was on my really old, you know, anime art from when I was like 13, 14. And it really is special that even on art that that was that old and, you know, with how limited my content is, that, that people still liked what I did. And I mean, that really does mean a lot to me. And it really, I really do appreciate that. And that really does make me feel special. And, you know, some of these comments weren't even from all that long ago. They were only from a couple months, which considering how long it's been since I've uploaded a video, I mean, that's really special. So, uh, so, sorry if you hear some crashing in the background. I'm uh, fidgeting with the ball because uh, that's just how it is. <laughs> but I really appreciate that you guys have stuck with me for as long as you have. And I want to tell you that, you know, because um, mo I'm planning on dedicating this mostly to uh, speed paints of coming to the lavender pages and coming to the lavender related art that I'm going to be able to upload a lot more frequently. I mean, heck, even just this one page, you know, this one page that I'm working on, I think I could easily split this up into two separate videos because this, you know, this whole video, like I said, is 30 minutes long. So, you know, I can get a lot more content uploaded a lot more frequently just by nature of the medium and how long this is. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. And I just wanted to say thank you so much for sticking with me. So, um, um, about the comic. So last video, I talked about how it was this comic that I've been working on since 2015. And um, interesting tidbit. Well, I don't know, tidbit. So about the backstory of the comic. Um, I'm debating if I should uh, talk about the backstory or talk about Aaron's delightful butt. It really is delightful. Both me and my line artist and my colorist. Um, I work with two really great people. Honey June is doing the line art for the comics reboot. They are amazing. And I'll send a link to their Twitter page. Uh, I really love working with them. They are so fun. And we have bonded over Aaron's butt. It's great. I love it. And then uh, Laluska. I have been friends with her you know, since probably the start of this YouTube channel. I met her on DeviantArt, and we have been friends since I was 14, and I just love being able to work with her, and I really love being able to work with them. They are a great team, and it's so fun to work with people who are as excited about your project as you are. 
This comic means a lot to me. I love the characters. I love the story. And it's really great to have some people working with me who are just as excited about the comic as I am. So that's awesome. So a bit of backstory. Coming to the Lavender um, was initially based on this novel that I was writing called Price Tag. And it started very similar to how um, Coming to the Lavender starts, where it's Aaron. He is on his way back home to visit his mom, and uh, Deanne and pals kidnap him to torture him. But in the old story, uh, unfortunately, there was no sexy bug woman to come save him. And uh, D.N. and Pals succeeded. And it was going to have a lot more scenes of Aaron's life in captivity and how he uh, survived the torture and him getting back home after a freak accident ends up um, temporary, ends up, uh, you know, allowing him to escape. And I'm trying not to go into uh, too many details about that part because that is a minor spoiler, even in the original, you know, 50 page comic that's currently up on Webtoons, I hadn't even gotten to uh, Douche Nugget and Pal's backstory. I'm just going to keep calling him Douche Nugget because, you know, it's not that offensive and YouTube doesn't pay my bills, so uh, screw it. But the the original story price tag, you know, I worked on it for years from 2012 to 2015. And it was just, I just lost motivation to work on it. Because it was just too upsetting and too depressing. And, and basically the, the majority of the comic was as depressing as page three. And in some instances it was even more depressing. Like there was going to be a, a you know, it, it was just going to be a lot more depressing. There was going to be this little girl character who would befriend Aaron and would be kind of there to sort of help him keep his sanity. And, of course, um, Douche Nugget, uh, being the fine, upstanding gentleman he is, would, of course, uh, seize the opportunity to use that against him and Annabelle. And it was just very depressing, and I didn't like working on it, and, you know, and Douche Nugget even ended up scaring me, even though he's just this fictional character that I created. So I shelved it for months, and I, <laughs> I wrote fan fiction of my own story, so I had created Miffany a while ago. Initially, she was just kind of this little MS Paint, you know, DeviantArt Miro. I don't know if anyone has ever heard of that or used that program, but that was the first digital art program that I used. And, uh, you know, Miffany was just this random sexy bug woman that I had, and... I was having a lot more fun writing about her than I was about writing, you know, Price Tag, the novel that I was working on. And I ended up writing this fan fiction for, uh, of, and it was basically just, you know, inserting Miffany into the Price Tag story and writing it what Miffany would do if she had been there to rescue Aaron. And it was a lot more fun than writing Price Tag, and I just loved thinking about it a lot. 
but I had clearly thought of it as just fan fiction and it wasn't canon. And I was going to, you know, either shelve price tag or I was going to write it as is. And I just, you know, I just, I didn't really have a pe personality for Aaron. I didn't really know what kind of person he was when I was writing price tag. I didn't really understand how to write him. And Douche Nugget was just getting way too creepy for me. And I just had to shelve it. But I kept thinking about that fan fiction of Miffany saving the day. And there was also this other story that I was working on, Coming to the Lavender. And it was about um, this guy, Feather, who was a cross-dressing artist and his boyfriend, Carmine. And it was just more of a slice of life story and just them making friends with a dragon named Mag. And, you know, just these two vanilla mortal men who were learning about magic while also um, trying to deal with um, Dick's abusive and homophobic brother. So, and that one was a lot more lighthearted than Price Tag and a lot more fun to write. And I was just more in that headspace. Crash, boom, bang. And eventually I just decided, you know, since I loved Miffany Saves the Day a lot more, that, you know, maybe I could just change it into, you know, rather than have a whole novel about Aaron getting tortured, I could just change it to a... Uh, short story and just have Aaron be featured in Miffany Saves the Day. And, uh, you know, Douche Nugget, instead of getting to torture Aaron for two years, he is uh, kidnapped by Miffany and dropped into a nest of OJs, which are these uh, nasty little piranha frog creatures. And he dies, and Aaron is rescued, and uh, Miffany lets him know that she would totally boink his brains out if he were up to it. And then she just leaves him to live his life. And initially, that made me a lot happier, and, you know, I was happy with the story, but... I still was thinking about these interactions between Miffany and Aaron, and I still, I had put a lot of effort into Douche Nugget, and I still wanted to do something with these characters, and I was still thinking about coming to the Lavender and Miffany and Aaron a lot. So eventually it got to the point where I just decided I was going to merge these stories and these characters that I'd been, you know, cobbling together and just make it into one continuous story. And so now we have uh, Coming to the Lavender as is. So, uh... Yeah, that's kind of the history of uh, Coming to the Lavender, which, you know, if you're just coming into the speed paint blind, probably won't make all that much sense. But, you know, if you maybe wanted to read Coming to the Lavender, which is currently still up on Webtoons, and I will have a link, could get a little more context, could uh, maybe make a little bit more sense of this speed paint. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, is this still going? <laughs> there we go. Uh, so, uh, I'm also doing, just to let you know for some context, for this first episode, um, 
well, this first couple of episodes is just me doing a voiceover after I have already done the speed paint because, um, as I mentioned in the previous video, I didn't know that they recorded any videos that you played in the background. And um, I'm, I think I was either watching Haunting of Hill House or uh, Danny Sexbang, you know, something like that in the video where it would be a little bit distracting if I tried to talk over this. Um, for future videos, I'm probably just going to record myself speaking while I am doing the speed paints. So, uh, yeah. Also, these are unscripted. I am not writing a script. I'm just going to learn as I go ahead. And, uh, yeah, I didn't do prior research to getting into speed paints. And I'm going to make that your problem. Um, here we have the whip and the blade. And they are uh, clearing out the guest room for Aaron, so to speak. Oh, here's another thing. Uh, now, while Aaron is um, Hispanic in the current iteration, when I first designed him, he was actually blonde and white. <laughs> and the corpse that... Uh, the whip and the blade here are taking out is actually, you know, kind of based on that old design of Aaron. It was basically just the same face, same hair, but, you know, just blonde and white instead of uh, Hispanic. And I had initially changed that because when I was, you know, looking through the lineup of my characters... Carmine was originally the only non-white character that I had. And I was thinking, huh, this is a bit of a male fest here. So I just decided to uh, change Aaron and to, you know, just uh, change Aaron's design. And, but I still wanted to have a bit of a nod to the old design. So I had, you know, it's kind of like they're taking out uh, the body of not just that previous design, but also that previous story. Kind of poor price tag era Aaron. And if uh, no one had saved him and he wasn't able to escape. Which is sad to think of. It's sad to think about. You know, because dying at the hands of Douche Nugget and Pals is, you know, he died hard, let's just say. Uh, and I'm going a little skimpy on the details, but um, just because I will be adding a lot more details once I'm, you know, once I've gotten these comic pages back from my colorist, Luska Salad, uh, let's just, I'm just going to call her Salad just for simplicity's sake, because that's what I call her. But I do the sketches, and then my line artist, Honey June, does the line art. Uh, you know, if you couldn't infer that from their title. And then uh, I hand over coloring duty to salad. And then I do the shading and details. So uh, basically what I'm thinking is when I am done with, uh, once salad has finished the coloring on this, there's going to be a lot of sweat stains and blood stains and, you know, his shirt is going to be all dirty. And, um, and just as another, another reason why I wanted to redo this comic. So the, um, Aaron gets kidnapped at this, um, truck stop and I call it the Yellow Rose of Texas truck stop. And 
initially I was, there's this scene where Aaron um, walks into the truck stop and he walks past this stand of t-shirts. And initially I was going to have it where, um, you know, my line art, I would let my line artists and colorists kind of, you know, just kind of design whatever they wanted on the uh, t-shirt designs. And I will probably do something like that later on down the line if they're interested in that. But um, just as an example of a little bit of foreshadowing, I decided to have one of the t-shirts in the background have the logo for the Yellow Rose Truck Stop, which is just a little yellow flower in a circle of blue and have it, you know, I actually end up putting on that logo on this t-shirt just as a callback to that first page um, in the reboot and just as a little bit of foreshadowing and a callback to, you know, this this poor guy is kind of, you know, there but for the grace of God, go Aaron. So that's just kind of the, whereas in the old comic, you know, I didn't put that much detail in the backgrounds. I didn't really put much thought into Aaron's expression or dialogue or anything to really show what his character is like or show, get some backstory to the audience. It was just very generic and not very well thought through. And so what I'm trying to do with this new reboot is try to put more thought into how can I show what kind of person these characters are? How can I foreshadow what's going to come? How can I add more world building? You know, every single page that I redraw, I'm thinking about what I can do to more effectively get across what kind of world is this? What kind of characters are these people? And what are their histories? And, uh, you know, all, you know, just that's sort of what I'm trying to do here. <laughs> so, uh, also on a less serious note, uh, in the previous video, you can see that the whip and the blade, these are the twins here, wear uh, green striped shirts <laughs> and uh, one of my friends Mars uh, sent me a picture of uh, the guy from Blue's Clues and then a comparison with the twins and uh, yeah so that's what that was his lie. He said he was going to college, but uh, no, in fact, he got himself hired with an immortal evil sadist. And he's been torturing people for a living ever since. So uh, good, on, good on my friend Mars for cracking the code. So <laughs> there's like, what, uh, five more minutes left? This is a pretty lengthy video. I don't know if I'm going to keep this whole part in. And right now I'm only doing the sketches um, just because I have an issue with my wrist. And I'm sure a lot of artists can relate, but I've got chronic wrist pain. I've got this brace that I have to wear. And... It's just a lot easier to have people help me with the line art and coloring rather than try to do it all myself. Not only physically, but also just from a motivation standpoint, because doing a webcomic is so hard. 
And while I still want to try to be more consistent with my, you know, with my schedule, it's still really difficult to, um, you know, to try to do a webcomic. And that's part of the reason why there were so many inconsistencies with the old comic and so many uh, issues is just because it's so hard when you're doing thumbnailing, scripting, sketching, line art, coloring, shading. It's just intimidating. Um, yeah, but... Uh, <sighs> oh, here's a cool thing that I probably should have mentioned. Sometimes when you're able to sit away from a drawing for a while, you're able to uh, figure out a way to fix problems. For example, I wasn't really sure. I didn't really like how I drawn his uh, douche nugget's face in this panel. So I sat away from it for a while, and then I was able to come back and figure out, you know, a way to fix his face and, you know, his chin. He's probably about the easiest of my characters to draw. Like, I still am glad that I have a reference sheet for him to keep him more consistent, but just in terms of his face shape and what he, and his details, he's pretty easy to draw. And he's also, you know, very, <laughs> I mean, yeah, he's, of course, the classic mustachioed villain dressed all in black, but he's, you know, pretty distinct. And, um, uh, yeah, and also if you kind of go back, one of the things I'd meant to talk about is, um, so you may notice this portrait in the background. Uh, that was not by me. That was actually by uh, Hideous Art on Twitter.com. I'll uh, add a link in the description. Um, and I had hired Hideous Dan to do that portrait because it's meant to be a self-portrait by Douche Nugget. And rather than try to draw in a different style or try to do a more painterly style. I just thought it would be more fun and more interesting to hire a different artist to make them look completely different and make it look like a completely different person drew, uh, drew it rather than just look like, oh, it's a drawing that I did myself, but with more detail. So, and there's a, and my mom actually thought, because I talk, I brainstorm a lot with her. And my mom, uh, when we were discussing different details that we could add in the background of this torture chamber, so it didn't look like, you know, your garden variety torture chamber. My mom thought it would be funny and also, you know, say a lot about Douche Nugget's character that in his torture chamber, he would have a massive self-portrait just hanging over it. And I did not disagree with her, and I thought it was a brilliant idea. And I, lo I love my mom a lot. She is great. She is a big part of what keeps me going is the idea of being able to you know, let her be able to read this full comic. And she has given me a lot of confidence in trying to become a full-time artist. And I just really love and appreciate her. And she's amazing and one of my favorite people. Uh, stream of consciousness. Um, sadistic bastards that are up their own ass to me loving my mom. Uh, that's what is going to be here now. 
Oh, it looks like uh, this is the part where Clip Studio decided to be stupid. So um, I think that's uh, coming to a close. Uh, so because I think I had to restart my computer after this point. So probably going to bring it to a close here uh, and we'll continue on in the next video. And I'll just kind of walk you guys through my progress and uh, give you a little preview about what's going on. And uh, hopefully later on you'll get to see some art from my line artist Honey June. They are amazing. And I uh, hope you guys have a good time. So uh, talk to you later. Bye.